Manzanita, I feel like that's a town that most Oregonians have heard of, although a lot of us haven't been there. Some of us don't even know where it is. Kind of sounds exotic. Uh, what are some of the pros and cons? I'm gonna show you right now. Seth Marchant with the Home Team Brokers here coming to you from beautiful Manzanita, Oregon. If you're new to this channel, Living on the Oregon Coast, we show you what it's like to eat, sleep, play, work, and in this case, the pros and cons of Manzanita. Hit the subscribe button, tap the bell, make sure you get notified each time we drop a new video, which is about once a week. Uh, we get people reaching out to us all the time that want to move along the Oregon coast or have questions. If you're one of those people, you can give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or you can click the link below if you want to schedule a Zoom with us. Okay, let's get into the pros and cons, starting with the pros first. All right, first pro, uh, Manzanita has a great little downtown. I would describe it sort of as a, a, a kind of cute, um, quaint, upscale downtown. It does feel like it's kept up a little bit better than some other um, smaller uh, downtowns along the Oregon coast. And a lot of people um, retire here. It, it is an older demographic. Um, the average age actually is, is uh, 67. Um, but despite that, uh, it's not a super quiet town um, compared to like say maybe a uh, Florence, which is about twice as big, maybe even bigger than twice as big as Manzanita. You go to Florence and uh, it's pretty quiet there. Uh, Manzanita, the downtown is typically bustling. There's typically people walking around. So it's a pretty lively downtown. Uh, and I think that's because people like to visit the shops and uh, they have a lot of great shops and just an all overall in general, a great little downtown. So. There's some downtowns along the Oregon coast where you kind of, when you visit those towns, you kind of, you check out downtown and you walk around a little bit. And there's some other towns along the Oregon coast where you really don't, there's not too much to, uh, to check out in, in the downtown. Manzanita is one that people tend to, uh, to walk around in the downtown just because it is such a, a nice little downtown. Uh, now this is, the next pro is going to sort of piggyback off of that one, which is that they have a great beach and the downtown is right on the beach. Not all Oregon coastal towns are going to be right on the beach. In fact, a lot of them set like on a river sort of inland. So you're not really walkable uh, to the beach um, in a lot of Oregon coast towns. Manzanita, the beach is right there and the downtown is right there. I don't think you're probably ever more than maybe say eight blocks or so um, from any kind of given place in Manzanita to the beach, whether you're staying um, you know, at a, a vacation rental or you're at a restaurant pretty much anywhere you're gonna be able to walk to the beach. So they have a great beach. One of the nice things about this beach is that I think uh, just to the north, Cannon Beach is probably the magnet for a lot of people. That's where a lot of people are going is to Cannon Beach just to the north of you. And this beach is really not a whole lot different than Cannon Beach. You just don't have that big, that big rock, haystack rock. And I love Cannon Beach by the way too, but it does get very, very crowded. So the beach in Manzanita is a lot less crowded. Now, you still get traffic down there. Like I said, the downtown is, there's always people downtown, but not nearly um, the type of traffic that you would see north like in a, a Cannon Beach, for example. So uh, the beach itself, um, you've got Oswald State Park just to the north of you, and you can see actually in this shot, what you're seeing is, uh, facing east, kind of panning south uh, to sort of reveal uh, Manzanita Beach there. You're actually surrounded by two state parks. You have Nehalem uh, Bay State Park just uh, to the south of you. So there are other attractions too um, that are going to kind of sort of take uh, people away from the beach. It's a great beach to um, just to explore, walk along. It's, it's a pretty um, fine sand dollars. I know people, uh, there's a lot of, I guess, um, a lot of great sand dollars and shells to, to find along the beach there. Dogs too, a lot of Oregonians uh, have dogs. And this is kind of um, skews, I think maybe a little bit more towards a dog friendly town. Good place to take the dogs on the beach. Good place to take the dogs downtown too. You might notice uh, walking downtown like uh, water bowls, like sitting out front of some of the, the storefronts, you know, to kind of indicating that this is really kind of a, a dog friendly place. So great downtown, great beach. 
And then the next real big pro is you do have a lot of good things to do. Now there's a lot of good things to do um, throughout most of the coastal towns uh, in Oregon, but this one is definitely no exception. Aside from the beach, and like I mentioned, you've got Oswald State Park just to the north of you, which has tons of trails. Um, that park does also have its own beach in there called Short Sand Beach, which is a beautiful beach. You can, you can see it panning here. Uh, that beach, I will say though, um, in my experience, does get pretty busy. Uh, you'll have to drive there, you'll have to find parking. It might be tough to find parking, but if you want to mix it up, you, you get a cool beach uh, other than Manzanita sort of nearby. Um, other than that, things to do, you've got a golf course. I haven't golfed it, but uh, not that I'm much of a golfer, but uh, I hear it's uh, pretty good and fairly inexpensive uh, from what I understand. Um, you've got the river right there too. I think there's some guided fishing trips that go up the river. Maybe not out to deep sea fishing, but at least up the river. Horseback riding. Uh, one of the few places that you can ride uh, horses along the Oregon coast. So that's uh, you know sort of a, a fun novelty for some people. You've got a spa if you want uh, a day of relaxation. And uh, you've got the Hoffman Center for Arts too. So um, they have a lot of programs that you can sign up for. So if you want to do some, uh, some arts and crafts kind of stuff, that is probably one of the better places actually uh, in the area to go to. So great downtown, great beach, lots of things to do. That all kind of makes uh, Manzanita a really desirable place along the Oregon coast. But what are some of the cons? All right, first thing, it's small. Uh, so um, some of the downsides with a smaller town, and, and we're talking under a thousand people. I think there's actually under even 500 people um, that live there full time. There's a lot of vacation rentals, we'll talk about that in a second here, but it's a smaller town. Um, no like big brand, big box store shopping or anything like that. You'll have to go north to Seaside or south to Tillamook to find some of the bigger stores. Although I will say, um, the small grocery stores that Manzanita has uh, are very nice. Um, but being in a small town, um, there's not going to be many job opportunities. Like, like I said, that the age here um, is a retirement demographic at 67 years old. So probably not looking for a job um, if you're coming here anyways. Maybe um, vacationing here or buying a second home. Um, and, and so some of the other challenges with uh, an area being small, again, with this market too, this housing market that we're in with the shortage of housing, it's tough to find a house there. If you actually wanted to, to move there, it's very difficult. Uh, as I'm filming this actually, uh, there's two homes on the market and one of them is over seven figures. So uh, it would be tough to find a house there. So that's what the home team brokers are here for, Paul and I, to help you if you do want to find a home there. Um, although it would be tough, uh, there are some options. Um, you can see actually from, from this uh, screenshot right here from the city, this is a, a list and you can kind of see the numbers we're look, looking at here. Hundreds of short-term vacation rentals um, in Manzanita. So what does that mean? Well, um, people might not be as likely to sell a, a, a vacation rental um, as frequently as if, they, the, if it was their primary residence. So you don't get a lot of ton, a ton of the inventory turning over in this market because there are so many short-term vacation rentals there. So kind of some of the pains that come with a smaller town um, you'll find with Manzanita. And this takes us right into our next con, which is expensive housing. Being highly desirable uh, and being uh, having a very um, low inventory and not a lot of homes that are coming onto the market really drives the housing prices up. You can see here from these numbers, average homes there, almost 700,000. Uh, they saw about 20% appreciation in the past year, which was pretty common, uh, 20%. That's a, a big number, it's a high number for sure. If you're not used to looking at these numbers, uh, that is pretty common along the Oregon coast and really actually throughout the state of Oregon and probably throughout a lot of the rest of the country. So very, very expensive housing. And to put that in perspective, I mean, you can find a starter home along the Oregon coast and a lot of other places uh, for maybe half of that, you know, maybe, maybe closer to 400,000, maybe a little bit more, something like that. So 700, if you're not familiar with the area, um, is pretty high. So that puts that kind of out of the reach for a lot of people. If you did kind of still want to be in that area, um, you've got Nehalem right there on the river and you've got Wheeler as well. And those home prices are gonna kind of fall a little bit more in line with 
what uh, kind of the, maybe the rest of the Oregon coast would be. Like I said, maybe a starter home might be more in the fours. Um, of course, at, at that point, you're not walkable to the beach. You're gonna be kind of like I mentioned, like a lot of other coastal towns, um, inland on the river, which again, which, which is why those properties aren't worth as much. But if you kind of wanted to be in the general vicinity, um, you can still kind of maybe get in for a lot less than 700. But if you want to be in Manzanita, it's going to be spendy. And this takes us right into our next con, which is lots of short-term vacation rentals. Now this might not be a con for everyone, but you will see a lot of uh, places along the Oregon coast uh, that neighborhoods will have signs that say, uh, no short-term vacation rentals or or keep XYZ neighborhood uh, short-term vacation rental free and that's just simply because homeowners don't typically prefer to live next to another home uh, that's a short-term vacation rental because you kind of get some things like you know you get partying you get people that are being louder um, the home might not be kept up as well because it's not being kept up by the homeowner and so you know if uh, your neighbor's property um, isn't worth as much then your property isn't worth as much so a lot of people don't like to have um, short-term vacation rentals as their neighbors uh, I get the sense a little bit that maybe that might not be the case as much in Manzanita because it is such a uh, touristy kind of um, vacation spot. Maybe some of the uh, the locals um, don't quite mind as much. Um, if you live there, you could maybe weigh in on the comments and, and let us know what you think about the short-term vacation rentals. But for a lot of people, that'll kind of be a con as far as home ownership goes. Now, if you're going to visit there, well, that's it's great because you've got <laughs> you've got a ton of, ton of selection of places to to, to rent. Um, but yeah, again, looking at the, that list, there's hundreds of short-term vacation rentals. Um, and again, I think the population is under 500 people. So most of the people there uh, or the homeowners there are renting their homes out. Not a, not a ton of people there renting full time. So that can oftentimes be a con. In this, in this town, you know, like I said, people might be a little bit more used to it. Everybody I've encountered there was always uh, really friendly, um, you know, at least for, for people that I could, um, that, that appeared to be local. So maybe they don't mind too much, but uh, sometimes that, that creates pains, especially for the homeowners. All right, so that's what I've got for pros and cons. Kind of to recap, great downtown, great beach, lots of things to do. That makes it super highly desirable. Uh, and that's why home prices are so high. And then kind of with that, you get some of the pains of a smaller area, a place that has a lot of um, short-term vacation rentals. Um, but all in all, Manzanita is a really great place and that's why a lot of people want to travel there. All right, so that's it everyone. That's everything that I've got. Uh, if you need help or if you have questions about buying a home in the area, give us a call, send us a text or shoot us an email or even click the link in the description to schedule a Zoom. All right, take care everyone.